Hey everyone, this is Eric. And today I want to show you a few different ways to make handrails using just native tools. So the thing about handrails is that they're actually custom to the staircase that you're using in your space. You can't just go online and go to 3D Warehouse and type in handrails and find one that looks cool and plug it in and think that it's going to fit. So depending on the length or width of your stairs, the height of the stair riser, the number of steps, whether it turns or not, all of these things are custom to your space. So it's best to just admit that from the beginning that a custom handrail is going to work the best. So let's look at a few different ways to make them now. So I've already got some built here. This is what we're going to do together. Um, they look pretty straightforward. Some of them are pretty simple profiles, and some of them start to get a little bit more complex. But either way, we're going to be using pretty much the same technique for each. I've got Naraj up here. So he's sort of, I guess, trepidatious about coming down the stairs without a rail. So let's go ahead and give him something to hold on to. In this case, I'm going to use the cheek wall as my guiding line for the profile that I'm going to then use the follow me tool. If you don't have a cheek wall, you can just use the edge of the steps in your design. So using the line tool, I'll just go ahead and find the end of the cheek wall, find that middle point, go up, and I'm going to give it one foot on either side. That's sort of the return. That's usually by per code. It may be different depending on the areas that you're in. I'm just going to use one foot as sort of a, a, pract a common number. And I'm also going to bring it up 30 inches. I would say 36, but I'm already accommodating the height of the six inch height of the cheek wall. So that's pretty much my standard handrail. Pretty simple so far. And then let's go ahead and drop a vertical down. Again, 36 inches, and that'll be the return of the handrail. So I'll do that on both the top and bottom. So now we have to think about the shape of the handrail. Let's start with a simple circle. Using the circle tool, I'm using keyboard shortcuts. That's keyboard shortcut C. I'm going to go ahead and give it a, it doesn't really matter what the diameter is or radius. I'm going to go ahead and give it 0.75 inches, just so that it's nice and thin. It's not too thick and chunky. Triple click to select the path for the first handrail, then slide over or find follow me, and just click once on the circle. And there we go. That was it. I'm actually going to undo that because before I do that, I actually want to copy. I should have done this first. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few copies of this because we're going to do this more than once. So I'm going to go with uh, times, how about three? Let's do four of these. And then just because it didn't take very long, triple click, follow me, and click on the shape. Let's do it again, but let's try a rectangle instead of that circle. So I'm going to switch over to the rectangle tool. This time I won't use a keyboard shortcut. And this is a little tricky bit here, is that I want this rectangle centered on my profile or on the line that I'm following for the handrail, the guideline. If you actually hold Option on a Mac or Alt on PC, what you're going to see is that it switches to the center point instead of the end point. So now when I set my rectangular dimensions, I can set them from the center, which is really helpful. And I don't have to move it after the fact. Let's go 2 by um, 0.5 again. It's kind of nice and thin. Triple click. If I, I don't even need to see, I just trust that the triple click selected everything so that I can stay nice and zoomed in. And then click, and there we go. That's it. I think this square handrail works more better, or the square shape works better with um, a sharp 90 degree end. You'll notice here that when you have a tubular or a pipe railing, sometimes that can be kind of a tricky joint. Um, one thing I would recommend would be actually to change the profile if you are going to go with a circular handrail is to think about having a smooth return so that when you're holding your hand down there, you're not hitting that sharp corner. So in SketchUp, easy way to do that is basically figure out ahead of time what the radius of this curve is that you want on this return. I'm going to go three inches. I'm going to keep it nice and shallow. So I'm just going to set a guideline for three. You can, use guide, you can use a guide point if you want, but I'm just drawing a line. And what that does is it breaks. You'll see it breaks this edge at three inches. And then I'm going to switch to my two-point arc tool, two-point arc. And then selecting the edge of that three-inch guide mark, I'm just going to kind of hover until it turns pink. What it's going to do, it's going to say I'm tangent. So that way I know I'm, I'm equal 
both three inches on the top and three inches down. Click once, click twice to finish that. And then I can go ahead and safely erase that 90 degree, knowing that I have a nice smooth curve here. Now, because I didn't want to, I don't want to draw that arc twice. Instead, I'm going to just switch to my move tool, hit the option Alt modifier, hit it so that you see the plus sign. That's going to make a copy. Let's try that again. I was talking while I was trying to do it. So move tool, option Alt modifier, grab that corner. It should be grabbing a copy. And I'm going to come up here to the top. I'm going to place that there. And I'm going to switch to the scale tool and hit negative one in order to basically mirror or invert that. And I can't move this back into place, unfortunately, because it's sticky. So it's going to pull that vertical with it. So using the modifier again, I'm just going to go ahead and make a copy. And then just using the eraser, take all of that out. So now I've got that curve on both the start and the finish. So if I put the same circle, 0.75, triple click, follow me, I'm going to get a much nicer return on both the bottom and the top of that. So let's go ahead and do one more. Speaking of a nice smooth curve and a nice way to sort of return the hand the handrail, let's go ahead and look at one more way to do it with sort of a double rail. For this, I'm actually going to switch to the circle tool. That's C on the keyboard again. And I'm going to go ahead and come down here. I'm just going to draw, again, a guideline. I want to pick that one foot. And then I want to draw the circle. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to lock it to this red axis, find that center point, and then go up until it locks. And then I could have done this before or after. It doesn't really matter, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and use the modifier to copy down that top rail the same one foot. So now we have a double rail. And then I'm going to select this face here, this back loop, switch to the move tool, modifier again, copy that and place it till it snaps on the other side. So then I can pretty much just erase everything on the inside. We're going to do the same thing that we've done for the others, which is a point uh, actually, I'm going to do this. I could do that either way. Which way do we want to do this first? I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Instead, I'm going to go ahead, instead of doing it on the ground, I'm going to put the circle uh, perpendicular to the path. So again, 0.75, triple click. This time, because I have my verticals in there, but they don't follow the path, I will hold Shift to unselect those, switch over to Follow Me, and click that and we've got a double handrail. Of course, we can create a component or we can do the same thing. We can just extrude a circle up to make the posts, but you get the idea. I wanna wrap up by doing the same process, but doing it on the curve and just understanding that if you've got a staircase that's a little bit more complex than the simple example that I showed, that's totally fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start by using my cheek wall for reference going to come up. I'm just going to follow the midpoint. Again, if you don't have a cheek wall, it's OK. You can just follow the um, the top of the stairs or the edge of your landing. And I'll erase that extra little corner there all the way to the top and let that return exit at one foot. So zooming out, triple click. We're going to move this up again along the blue axis. We're going to go ahead and say 30 inches, the same as we did before. And in this case, I'm going to, I do want this to hit the ground. So 36 and one more time, 36. There we go. So there's the profile we want to follow. Triple click. And before we do that, we actually need to decide whether we want to go round or square. Since I have a square post or a rectangular post, I'm going to go with that on this one. So rectangle tool again, zoom in, option alt to get it centered. Set that same two by 0.5, triple click. I'm just trusting that everything's selected because I can't see it all. And then come down here and select uh, my shape, my rectangular shape. And there we go. You can see now it's coming up, over, up, and then it's following the corner. It's following the path of my landing and then coming up and returning at the top. So to finish this off, obviously, um, what we want to do is probably before we get too far is just select everything. If I can get the face 
not the not that profile, not that line. Group it. And now this is already a component. You can see it says make unique. So I've already made a component with a little bit of a guide box. This just makes it easier for me. I can turn that guide or that dashed layer off. And then what I'll do is I'll set that and scale to fit. I'm just gonna do a non-uniform scale just to make it a little bit quicker and place a few of those. How many do we think we want? Let's divide that by two. So we've got a center post, spin around, and of course we could do the, we could place the posts along the vertical if we wanted to along the slope. But in this case, I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. Use my little guide to line this up. And one last time using the modifier tool, copy this over. Let's see, let's do that same divided by two, maybe divided by three. I don't know. I think that's okay. I think that looks fine. Let's see how that looks. That's starting to look pretty good. So that's it for making handrails. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. We actually read the comments. So if you have either a different way of doing something or want some follow-up information about anything that we covered in this demo, be sure to let us know and we'll keep the conversation going there. Thanks again and see you next time.